So today's video is gonna run through four key financial habits that you could be doing that are stopping you from becoming wealthy in the future. And how do I know this? Well, I spent far too much of my life making these mistakes. And if there's one thing I want from this channel is to make sure that I teach you guys on the things not to do. So you can have an easier and more comfortable ride than myself. So with that, let's dive head first into these. Now the first is not looking at your ins and outs. And I say this because prior to graduating from university, my budgeting skills were limited to making sure that the job I had at the time funded three nights out in the week. And of course, a few yazis to soothe the hangover in the morning. But life is a lot more different now when compared to university. And when I had to become an adult, and start managing my finances, it was initially very tough, but it was the best exercise I ever did. Now to keep this video concise for you all and tell you less about my antics at university, I basically did something like this. Here we can literally see the ins and outs of my incomings and obviously my outgoings that I had at that time. Now I would highly urge you all to do something like this. Get yourself a spreadsheet, open up Google Sheets and make two columns, one with incomings and one with outgoings and literally list down every single thing. Your rent, your mortgage, your subscriptions, your Just Eat, your Sky Bets, your Petrol, your OnlyFans accounts. Literally list everything. Be honest about it. Go through your bank statements and have a true reflection of where you're at. You see, most of the time, because it's digitalized, we hardly know where our money's going. Then, when you have this, write down all the income that you have in the other column to get a true reflection of where you're at. Now, obviously, this depends highly on how many income streams you have. If you literally have one, it's gonna be an easy exercise, but I want you to list everything that comes in. So for myself, just some very quick examples. This could include YouTube, Skillshare, property investments, consultations and health excel etc etc now what i want you to do is run a simple formula and see if you are in a positive cash flow monthly or a negative one now of course if you're in a negative one please don't worry it's good that you can recognize this and you've now seen it in fact i was very close to being in negative when i first did this i was so clueless to my outgoings that i had to start instantly cancelling subscriptions to magazines that i didn't even know i had i had magazine subscriptions to men's health men's fitness GQ, FHM, if anyone remembers any of those. And then what I started to do was I started borrowing my mom's Netflix account, her Amazon account, and slowly started to reduce my expenses. In fact, what I want you to do is ask yourself this question. Can I live without any of these expenses for a year? And if the answer is yes, then get rid of it. Now, the goal isn't to make you have a miserable life, but it is to make you more aware of your financial decisions and get used to living within your means rather than trying to live on a borrowed life or to impress other people. You can impress others down the line when you increase your income streams and have a surplus of cash and you're not worrying about balancing your books. Then by all means, you can give your mom's Netflix account back. I should really do that by the way. Now the second is credit cards and loans. Now with the ability to literally have credit and loans at the click of a finger, it's quite a dangerous game. It can get us all into the wrong types of debt. And we're often able to finance cars or more expensive items than we actually need or should be having at that particular time. In fact, I remember going to get my first dream car and selling my Fiat Punto. It was a golf and I got this after I got my graduate job. I was keen on fulfilling this lifelong itch of owning a car, a golf, that I knew me and my family couldn't afford as I was growing up. Nonetheless, I did the stupid thing of seeing a shiny new Sirocco come up within that particular year that had just been released, costing around, I think it was about 50 pounds extra a month. And within about three seconds, I negotiated with myself that this was actually the car I needed. I had suddenly given up my lifelong goal of owning a Golf and sold it down the river and cost myself an extra 900 pounds with the insurance a year. I didn't need to do that. But I know we all do this from time to time. We are prone to making emotional decisions and telling ourselves that we'll figure it out in the future rather than making the right decision today and then figuring out how to make more expensive purchases should we need them without jeopardizing our financial situation in the moment. Now, another worthwhile note is that comparison will kick in. If your cousin, your friend, your neighbor buy something flashy. I know so many people who will shoot themselves in the foot to keep up with the Joneses, as they say, and make silly decisions. Please don't make silly decisions. In fact, try and use this rule, a rule that I live by, the rule of three. If you can't afford to buy something three times, don't buy it. If you can just live with that, it's gonna save you so much pain and bad financial decisions. Now I also know that you can lease cars and do PCPs, something which I actually do. And even with that, I want you to have the same rule in mind. 
Yes, you may be able to afford a 500 pound car rather than a 300 pound per month car, but can you afford 500 times three? If no, then don't do it. You don't need it. You want it, but you don't need it. And there's a huge difference. But the problem many of us don't realize until it's too late and we kick ourselves about it in hindsight is that luxury purchases rarely move the needle of happiness for us, especially over a sustained period of time. Yes, it's fun for the first few days and while snapping about it on Instagram and getting all your friends to say, ooh, <laughs> that was such a weird, that was such a weird expression but it's short lived. And what's worse is it moves you further away from your ideal goal of hopefully financial freedom and long-term wealth. Remember, you have nothing to prove to anyone. No one is gonna help you get out of unnecessary debt, so don't get into debt for anyone else. Next up, we have not planning for those rainy days. Now, this is a tough one. You can literally be like my dad and want a rainy day fund for 60 years, or you can be like my mom and have one for 60 minutes. But what I would urge you all to do is find a more realistic in between, because life has a funny way of throwing a spanner in the works when you least expect it. Cars breaking down, for example, someone getting ill, being laid off from work, boilers going, etc., etc. These are so common and trust me, throughout life you're gonna get hundreds and hundreds of more unexpected costs that maybe you haven't budgeted for that will creep in your life and potentially set you back. And a random example here is, I bought a property a long time ago that was gonna cash flow net 800 per month from day one. And literally three hours after completing and picking up my keys, I'd get home and the electrics had gone and it cost me a further 600 pounds, killing my first month of cash flow and leaving me with only 200 pounds. But sadly, that's life, and that's something that we must all prepare ourselves for. So even if it is just 50 pounds a month, put something aside and leave it there. Don't touch it until you're financially comfortable. And whilst we're on this topic of saving, a quick way I used to save, just to kind of give you guys some insight, was I would instantly transfer my salary, or at least some of it, back when I had my nine to five in either an ISA or into a family account. So I literally couldn't touch it. Because telling yourself that you'll save it at the end of the month simply won't happen. But if you're less restricted to having less disposable income to spend, you will simply spend less money. And the final one and the most important one, especially for this channel, is not investing. Now, for many of us, we have this thing that we need loads of money to invest, especially when it comes to property investing. But that's not the only investments that you can do. You honestly don't need that much money to get started. You can get investing from as little as 50 pounds a week. And this is a topic of interest for me and I know many of you over on Instagram. So I will be actually shooting videos on how you can actually get started for as little as 50 pounds a week to really future-proof yourself or future generations that come after you. But back to the topic of investing. Alongside a rainy day fund, please try and recognize that by spending or leaving excess money in a current account is a surefire way of seeing your money lose its value in the marketplace. So what you have to do, which I know is your question, is start thinking like the rich and wealthy and invest in your cash into areas where it will significantly grow over time. Now, anything that promotes ridiculous returns is likely gonna have you losing your money. It's as simple as that. So please be sensible on this. Do thorough research, but know that investing early is the quickest way to an easier future. I really, really wish I started investing earlier. I started my journey so late. I mean, I didn't buy my first property until 25, and even though you don't have to buy properties, I wish I'd at least used other investment strategies that I will be sharing on this channel to start getting my money working for me. Compounding interest, compound interest on your investments will make your future self Thank you. So with that, my friends, I'd like to wrap up the video here. I hope you found it useful. And I look forward to speaking to you all in a few days. Have an awesome day, guys.